Welcome to the Lake Forest Podcast, podcast by the lovely city of Lake Forest, featuring topics like local news, sports, music, people, food, and mail-in ballots. My name is Pete, and I'm joined with the voice of Lake Forest High School basketball, football, lacrosse, chess team, skew, woo, woo, woo. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y dot com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Josephitis, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Ganjier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Navy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havey. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Paul Hammond, candidate for Lake Forest Mayor, April 4th, 2023. He's a lifetime resident of Lake Forest, licensed professional engineer in Illinois, registered energy professional in Chicago, Purdue electrical engineering graduate, BSEE 1979, commodity trader for over 40 years. He's running on the issues of stopping the plastic grass in Lake Forest parks. So every 10 years, the plastic field needs to be replaced because of deterioration and wear. Email paul.hammond.com. Dot pe at gmail.com. We'd also like to say we're thankful for our Patreon supporters, Reverend Lou Back from the Church of the Holy Spirit, Matt A, Elizabeth C, Costa, Lance Otto, RDM, John C, and Mike Adelman. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan. Walker, how you doing, Scoop? Good morning, Pete. Happy spring. Beautiful yeah, it's a, day. It's a different spring here in Illinois. Yes, it is. Compared to Lake Forest where South. You are. <laughs> Lake Forest South, I had no idea. Naples, Florida. It's like I went to the Lantern, a very fancy Lantern everywhere I went. I was going to say, yeah, that is kind of a good term. Naples or Lake Forest South. Quite a few people down there. There's a thousand. Pe- there's a thousand people there. From Lake Forest. Yeah. Wow. Well, at I least. Know. Well, I know when I was walking around town, they're saying, you know, hey, your podcast sucks. Love the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I get that like, all either the way, time. you're. Either way, you're right. Either way, you're right. Just and keep thank you watching for <laughs> and, and and listening. That's that's correct. <laughs> Uh, but no, you know, I'm slumming around Naples, checking things out. First time I've been there, I believe. And, uh, I've been to Fort Myers before, which is just to the North. And, uh, I like Fort Myers, you know, I, I'm a big, I'm an Orlando guy. I'm a Wisconsin Dells, you know, guy, you know, the I, Dells. You know Paul Bunyans, but you I know, going Paul Bunyans. <laughs> We went up to the, we used to go to the Dells and, you know, Pam with the kids and all that. And they're like, why the hell are we going to Paul Bunyan's? I love Paul Bunyan's. We went there as a kid and all that. <laughs> that is the, the Las big elephant Vegas. Ears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot. Eating everything on pewter. Yeah. It's awesome. The, do- the donuts. Oh, Ooh, donuts God. God. Oh. But uh, anyway, so. You know, met met up with family. Look, you got good family, good peeps. You can meet up anywhere, Naples, Dells, you know, wherever, and 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 it's a good time. But I did see a, a part of the country which I I have not seen, and it was interesting going to these places and talking to different people that aren't in Illinois, but they have they are 
they have an Illinois license, but they're not in Illinois, and they have to vote on this mayoral election. And mm. God, if it wasn't for this podcast, I don't know what people would know because they're all talking about the railroads and they're all talking about the uh, the vote in November, and that's all that anybody knows. And hmm. uh, one candidate's a guy, or well, two guys and, and one girl, and Democrat and Republican. That's it. Hmm. So I Thank spent God most of my, well, I spent most of my time, you know, going through all the stuff, you know, with them and they're like, no way that happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it did. I'll, here, I'll prove it. <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll see if we get some uh, new people watching the show, but uh, very, very nice place. Very nice weather. Uh, like I said, you're with family and good people. It doesn't matter where you're at. Uh and I was able to do some, uh, you know, a few of my shows and this show uh, uh, out there. It's amazing what you can do with the technology. It's 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 kind of hard to do it on a smaller screen when you have bad eyesight, but uh, we got the shows out oh, no, nonetheless. <laughs> All right, now Pete, settle a question. What yeah. was that? An Italian flag you were wearing the last couple shows? That was it was uh St. Patrick's Day. That was my uh, Irish fest. Yes. If you look uh we did a show at the Cubby Bear, I don't know, five years ago, and that was uh, the vest that I wore that big uh-huh. old hat on. And gotcha. You never want to play a show on St. Patrick's Day. That's uh, that's amateur hour and don't stand too close to the stage. <laughs> Especially if they're serving green beer and you have good shoes on. Well, it's uh we're I think well the show's gonna broadcast spring break will have started for lake forest so that it's going to be a clear out here uh start is, friday is it, or maybe even starting tomorrow <laughs> oh well people will be traveling during the planes right now you know watching things uh and so it might they'll be, be a ghost now there might be some tumbleweed blowing around town next week <laughs> oh perfect for, perfect for us to uh go out and about so what have we missed here uh so many different people saying things. It's nice to see uh, the president of the caucus finally sending out an email. Yeah, saw that. When I went to actually the um, third ward meet and greet Sunday out at Elowa, which was uh, Randy was out there. And How, how'd that go? A nice little turnout. That was good. Yeah. Yeah, I think he um, overheard some of the conversation, and you know, I think he's just spot on on a lot of stuff, questions that were asked. And he's, uh, he says he's for not having the third rail. So is that a double right. negative? No, no third yeah. rail. Wow, yeah, yeah that, that issue kind of evaporated, you know, at that forum and all that. I guess it was the day of or something that it was basically shut down. That the not going to happen so that's a good thing so was that ever called a debate or it's just always been a forum that is just god awful uh, I, you know i don't know i mean i again the one i attended a few years ago was when era was running for the first time for alderman against joanna desmond yeah and um yeah, that was at Croya, I think. I mean, talk about how it's changed with um, the venue. But, um, you know, I don't know if it, it wasn't even a debate then. I mean, it, I don't. I think it's wrong to say debate. I don't know if it just says people just call it debate. But yeah, I think it's very well orchestrated on what questions get asked and, and you know, encourage everyone to throw their questions in but yeah you know, there's a I nice think, reading process <laughs> i think we could put something together for people that have guts like paul ham and eggs right to uh come on and you know uh i think get, there, get... i think i think after what has been going on with this election i think um one i believe that there's going to be some changes i think the caucus has to relook at themselves Honestly, and um, you know, even even the city, like how in the future do we not the city, but the city as you and I know, yeah. how 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 are contested elections? You know, what's the proper forums and all that? Because I think there should be more 
debating or public asking questions, whether it's through a write a note and then, you know, have someone yeah. walk behind the curtain and throw it away or, or, you know, the traveling mic type thing, you know, just raise your hand and give your mic and ask the question. And, but I think that's going to have to be figured out how it's going to occur because I, I, unfortunately, I think there's going to be more contested elections after this year. And, and, the caucus is going to need to be able to prepare themselves for it, just as the public. I mean, how are we going to give everyone a fair shake? And, you know, I don't think one forum does any of the candidates do justice. I mean, I just don't know how you can. How can you answer a question in one in minute? 60 seconds. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. It's like, and go and stop. <laughs> yeah. You take somebody from Evans, Evanston, plop them in. And it's like, you know what? I feel bad for you. I'm going to add another 30 seconds. So what? Yeah. I just think, you know, there's, it's, it's, I guess, knowing the situation too. If you're going to have this, you got to know what's kind of on the street going on, questions and all that, and be able to, to do that. But boy, I tell you that it's tough. In 60 seconds, you don't, you can't get your point across. I don't care who you are. Well, doing this show, if you don't, you have long form content, which is like our hour, 90 minute shows. And if you don't chop it up in little bits and pieces where people will try it and sample it at one minute, right? you know, it's hard to get people to watch the rest of it. So I don't know if that's what they're doing. I don't think they're that advanced. Uh, yeah, I don't know, because I thought it was funny. Um, you know, we were standing up because there was no seats and it's yeah. just, that's our fault because we got there late, but. I think the moderator, she said, probably with like 15, 20 minutes left, she goes, I notice a lot of people's people doing the head bob. <laughs> Let's you know, do some calisthenics or something. But again, I mean, it's like, yeah, it is. That's And it was only an hour. And, it was, you know, let's be honest, it was boring. I but, thought it was uh, at Lake Forest Place. Yeah. Um, well, there was. I know it was at Gordon Center, but it well, looked like yeah, Lake Forest I Place. I get you. <laughs> yeah. I, I... <laughs> Well, the, the funniest thing is I'm in that category now, which is a sad thing. So there's. Oh, well, so am I. I know. <laughs> I just buy. I just buy more hair dye. <laughs> but um, no, I just thought it was. I thought there was 15 minutes, in the beginning that was dedicated to you know rules and of engagement yeah. and all that, and you know that should have probably been done 15 minutes before the hour because you only have an hour and you got 60 seconds. You got three people, you know. <laughs> So, I mean, there was a time and a place for League of Women Voters. I think that time is gone or it needs to evolve into something else. And I don't know if people will be willing to do that because it's a, uh, I'm going on a limb here. A lot, lot of, there's one, a lot of Democrats on that side, it just is. And uh, you throw in a, a female on top of it, it's just not a, Look, I, I'm sure people say, yeah, you can look past that thing. But no, no, you don't. Yeah, I, I think that, the, you know, I would tend to agree in a sense with you. But I think the problem was it doesn't happen here much. So yeah. there's no one really, whether it's the League of Women Voters, there's no track record of, well, how do we do this the most efficient way? And what's the best way to do it? I think. After this now, I think, like I said, there's been a lot of learnings from good, bad, and ugly of this whole thing. But, um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I I don't think they anticipated as many. I mean, I think they did by the, you know, change the venue being Gordon. But, I mean, it was well, just like, I don't know. A lot of wasted energy. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of weird videos out there uh, that I've been blamed for. Yeah. And look, anything that I put out there, guys, it's on the, my, our YouTube channel. And if it's not on our YouTube channel, right. I didn't do it. And, <laughs> we didn't and do it. you know, and we don't endorse any of that crap. We don't endorse, you know, if, if people are out there, you know, sniping and all that on whatever candidate, we're not, <laughs> you know, like you said, it's not us, but, but we don't also endorse that either side. I mean, it's just, you know, crazy. And, and and it really has gotten crazy with, I mean, it's unbelievable what some of these people are doing. Look, <laughs> I would like I would like to think 
even though some people call us dumb and dumber or uh we were called the Muppets. <laughs> We should, you know, how you, you know the technology. We should do a show where we could just yeah. do like the Muppets, be like, you know, can you splice in that? Like, we're, oh, yeah, we're absolutely, Muppet characters and we do the whole show. It's Muppet characters. It's so funny. You got Kermit the Frog doing an op ed piece and calling us the guys up in the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guys up in the balcony, well, that was Cisco and Ebert back in the day, right? <laughs> Well, back in the day, but you know those old guys in the in, in the balcony, the, the Muppets. Uh, oh, they're hilarious! Oh, they are, and uh, you know they're the critics. So I guess that could be us. But uh, you just have all these people, and I, I I saw it with the school board, and I bet you April fifth, it's like all right, we all love each other. Let's go on. Nothing happened. We move <laughs> move along our business. Right. Or do you think it'll be different this time? Um, I. I... <laughs> It's hard to say. I think, I hope, let's say this, I hope everything just rocks and rolls and moves on. I just don't think that it, it will, depending on who wins. Yeah. Um, I think they've, uh, you know, I think Randy's the, the and the slate of candidates is the best candidates and best yeah. people, and they've shown it. And, that, you know, I think, as voters and members of the caucus, like everyone in the community, they are, um, when you start to see both sides, and I think the forum, to me, the forum really kind of showed, one, there really aren't any issues out there. You know, I mean, again, I'm standing, but I don't see any, what what are the issues? I don't see any. And uh, at the end of the day, I just think the whole process, Randy was selected, the appropriate way contrary to you know what everyone's screaming um and and he's the best candidate i i mean i mean that, go, that goes forward. without saying but it's and then people are getting are telling me hey i'm tired about you bashing on this person i didn't learn anything new well there's nothing new it's you, you had this uh forum come up and then you have proof saying well i like the caucus and i wouldn't change a thing everything's fine Yet she's going against it. So I, well, I don't get I, it. I, mean, I was at the um, on Sunday. Pam and I went over to LOI. There was a meet and greet. Um, yeah. Great donuts. Great, great bagels. Just good time. Do we know uh, But but the thing was, and uh, um, you know, Randy was there chatting with people, and you know, I got to overhear some of the conversations and some of the questions that the residents that showed up. This guy's got he he answers the questions, which tells me there's nothing scripted. He knows what he's talking about. He knows he's in tune with what the city, the residents, and everything is about moving forward. And I was impressed with him, even at that venue. Just like boy, I tell you what, it just keeps. Yeah, you know, he he's the one. And again, I'm not saying that um, you know Paul or Prue are horrible candidates but there's just randy's just proven much better and can talk the issues um and shows that he can communicate and work with the city which i think is the most important aspect of being mayor is can you how do you build that relationship and work with the city of officials I, I, I haven't seen anything that would kind of skew me no pun intended yeah um away from skew, that you skew <laughs> It's just when I see him talking with other people, I'm like, wow. Yeah. Not only is he smart, but he's he's on top of everything. And that's what I guess I want is for my leader of the community. Yeah, he doesn't run and he talks to you, you know, face to face. The one thing, Pete, that I, I the other thing about Randy, I that I think people don't really take into consideration is he didn't ask or say, I want to run for mayor. He was asked by the caucus, asked by, you know, recommended by other people. Interview Randy. I, I think that's a real testament. Kind of, um, for me, that's kind of a measuring stick is the person not raising their hand, but being asked yeah. and accepting. That That is, to me, who I want to see because he was asked to. He wasn't, he didn't go and say, I want to be mayor. 
if that makes sense. And that to me, that's a big, big deal. Well, we got two two weeks, two days, something like that to the uh, final election. And uh, I have here the, the mail-in stuff. Nice. I've never, I've never done it I didn't before. Get that. I didn't get mail-in stuff. You have to go online. Oh, okay. And select oh, well, I didn't it. Get and, it. I, and, <laughs> and 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 I get well. It's technology, Scoo. But you know, they give you the ballot. Right. I'm sure I'll put this up uh, so everybody can see. Uh, maybe we call this an unboxing. But you, just like you get at the city hall, you fill out the circles, fold it up, put it in, signature. Signature's key for voting. Not an ID, but signature. I found and, that out yesterday. The ID doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. See what I'm talking about? But you, you, you put it in, and then you go to a special uh, mailbox over at City Hall. You put it in, and you're done. And I tell so, you, I, I went yesterday and early yeah. voted and walked in there. I think five minutes later, there's you know two other a couple ahead of me but it was like in and out and i tell you what that's the way to do it i mean it's so quick so efficient and so i think people look if to be a part of the process you go online you click a link you get this sent in here it is you put it in postage paid for and you put it in the in the right mailbox I don't believe you can put it in a regular mailbox. That's what I'm getting because they give you a little, they give you a little form that says where where are the mailboxes that you can uh, put it at. Hey Pete. Yeah. <laughs> don't even just go into. I mean, you spend more time doing the mail in than you do walking into the, checking the box and saying here you go. <laughs> well, like it's going to rain a little bit later. Ah, oh, you know well. what? I'll put it off. I'll put it off because yeah. look, Republican voters they that more more likely than not they wait till the last day. And if something happens on that last day, ah, I'll let, I'll let my other, my buddies take care right. of me on the vote. It, and then they don't vote and it doesn't happen and you lose. Right. So letting everybody know PSA, it's pretty, it's, it's I also, pretty easy. I also heard something that uh, I, I guess the more West Lake Forest people use, usually vote at Christ church. I heard that. Oh was moved. yeah. I got that. That, uh, that was moved to Knollwood. I heard, which I don't understand. Well, here, let me just tell oh, you, you got here. something on that? You know, the, the night before the show. We try to take care of everybody here at the Lake Forest Podcast, no matter what Muppet you are. Huh. <laughs> okay, here's what I got. Now, I don't know if this is a conspiracy thing, but... Uh, oh, God. The county changed polling places for West Side. It, you have to vote in Lake Bluff. Folks out in Conway have to go ver, vote in Vernon Hills. See that that it doesn't make sense to me. I I, I mean again, county, I'm not the count, smartest tool in the shed, but why would you? I'm voting for Lake Forest issues. Why am I going to Vernon Hills or Knollwood? <laughs> so County Clerk Anthony Vega, which is a Democrat. Sandy Hart, equal. I don't know. I'm not that's on weird. the west side. I'm on the east I, I side. I wouldn't say conspiracy, but I'm just like, that's strange that you got to go to another town to vote for issues in your town. <laughs> Scoot, I don't know. People just send this stuff in. And then... Uh, so make sure got... you're out, out west. Make sure at Conway you, you don't robotically go to Christ Church to vote. Right. You have to go other places. Then I got a couple notes on, you know, we had Joe Weiss and Rick Lesser on the show. You know, why did we do that? What's going on? And I don't know about your policy, Scoo, but mine is I don't ever want to be the smartest guy in the room. I want to have people that know more than me. And, uh, you know, it's election time. The more point of views that you can get. Now, right. the more the more people you have on a show, the more jumbled it gets. So if we can organize it a little bit better. It could be a better experience, but if we have a real estate issue coming on, I want to have a real estate person, right. you know, come on and, and talk about it. Uh, so everybody's welcome on the show. 
you know, it's if and everyone that has opinions, that, that's great. Thank you. But you're welcome to come on the show, too. Oh, I, no, I can't come on the show. I'm not going to oh. give my no. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Well, you, can you guys you come st- on the show and just have a um, avatar and then you can we can like like a Sasha your, avatar. Yeah, you we can voice out your real voice. I mean. <laughs> You know what they behind the scenes? You're like a robotic voice. <laughs> Dasha, Dasha. Uh, so we have spring break next week, Scoo. Yeah, starting uh, Saturday, but I'm sure it's going to be starting around Thursday, where the the towns. Poof. <laughs> yeah, perfect. And then Melanie Rummel. And I hate to be talking about this negative stuff, but I just want to understand it. She's an alderman that that was selected by the caucus, and she's being used to promote Prue. Uh, Didn't Melanie and uh, Mike Rummel run into problems with some donations or what? Uh, I think it was Mike when he was the county guy. I don't know. I don't don't really delve into that, but. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> and I'm I'm I I'd rather talk about Randy, but Randy is so good. Brew is so the opposite. And the people that are going forward to to prop her up, they all have some type of baggage she- like this. And <laughs> Randy's boring. I like boring in my governmental leader. I don't want problems. Well, it, it's, I don't want issues. Especially when there's nothing wrong with the operation of our city right now. I mean, why would you want something to all of a sudden drastically change? I don't know. <laughs> I think but that's I a be- you, right? Yeah. I think that's the best tagline that Randy ever said was, if you like boring, I'm your guy. Right. I want boring. Well, actually, running a podcast, no. <laughs> I like controversy, but <laughs> but for governance, uh, yeah, I know. So, I, it's just it's just kind of um, it, it's a really you know it's a really tough nut. And again, I'm going to say what we talked about this about what a year ago. Yeah, we we're saying you know kind of projecting if you know the mayoral race if you know current alderman or past aldermen are going to be run running there's only one selection and there could be a contested you know we talked about that stuff and and it would be a first time because if it was true that alderman versus alderman that's that's really never happened and you know here we are and it's just kind of interesting how it's it's played out but um there's a lot of people that are conflicted well, conflicted, you have a, a division. I thought it was bad with the school board. This is worse than the school board. You have oh. you have people that the minute you put up a sign, it's uh, you, it's the North versus the South. It's civil war. <laughs> and like I asked you before, like I saw with the school board, all right, come April 5th, eh, everything's fine. Right. Well, I so, think, again, you know, Pete, yeah, you're absolutely right. But I also kind of go back to the forum that we thought was kind of, eh, but it was clearly demonstrated. There's not really any issues. The candidates are agreeing or opposed, or not agreeing, uh, diametrically apart, right? I mean, it's like, you know, it's it's um, one thing to hear before the forum all this stuff that's wrong on one side and then when you get into that form and you actually hear the person speaking it's like wait a minute <laughs> well the two you guys all agree what what are we doing here <laughs> that's kind of my point because all right railroad that's Done. bye-bye okay <laughs> no issue <laughs> and then the second thing is the november vote bull crap that sheila what's her for henrietta I don't, why did she, why did they mess with the bylaws and do this? It just makes me wonder, but taking that out, 
of account, there's nothing. Right. And and if 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 everything's fine with the caucus, then why did Prue say everything is? is <laughs> do you know what I mean? She's if if it's okay, why are you why are you going against the system that took care of you for such a long time? Right, and and I guess that's that's been my whole um, argument. I know you and I disagree about the whole political party argument, yeah. which is fine. I mean, I, that's we both have different views on it. But if you take that out of the equation, which you know, in our beautiful perfect town, it's nonpartisan, right? Just staying in that world, then let's talk about the issues that you want to help improve the city on. Or, you know, there's issues that are bad that we got to fix. There's nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's like, why are we doing this? What's going on here? Why, you know, here's our political process. Pick this guy, which I think, you know, aside from all the BS, he is the best yeah. person that they interviewed. Yeah, there well, probably could have been other people, but. The process worked its way through, and when we do have the city does have the best person that was, you know, finalized. Well, and then you get, you know, the voters if they come out, it's like this doesn't affect me. I don't really care. And the way to learn about it is so, you know, we're trying to make it a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting right. to bring this stuff up, and in a little bit shorter form content, try to condense a three-hour meeting down to 20 minutes but if you do care i mean the biggest thing you can do besides volunteer for your community is to to learn about what the hell is going on and then it's up to the city it's up to everybody to put it in a format in in time crunch times that here's a snippet of information here are three issues that are affecting us now this is what you need to know and put it out there and everybody needs an editor these days well, I think Pete, it's it's you're right, absolutely right. I think the problem is there's no real unbiased print media anymore. I mean, you get all these different rags popping up and you know showing what their bias is, and it's it, it, there's nothing for a small community to kind of resort to and say, you know, we talked about it last week. I think the Lake Forester. Yeah. You know that was the staple for eons of, you know, is very, I say unbiased because if there was politics stuff in there was both sides, right? You can read about both sides of what's going on and whatever, but um, that just doesn't, uh, everyone kind of want, you know, I want to create print media of my own and, you know, scream on my whole issue. Then it's like, yeah, that does, that's not, I don't know. I mean, it's a tough in today's age, tough, you know, how do you, well, you well know. my background was in the newspaper business for a while and uh over time administrative costs come into play mm-hmm. and integrity of the news having all these reporters and all this stuff and it needs to be a hundred percent ninety percent get it to ninety percent and you think outside the box on the on the other ten. And if you can have a mixture of something that you can put in your hands combined with something that you can go to online, maybe there's something there. I've had a couple of people reach out and say, hey, what, you know, why don't you try to do this? It comes down to integrity. Do you think the guys have an agenda? Whoever's the editor, do they have an agenda? The first agenda is you have the editorial room and then you have the sales room where mm-hmm. you got to sell ads. If you don't sell ads, that then you don't have money to you know keep the paper out. So sometimes sales will say, hey, well, could you put an article in about this and this? And then it comes co- convoluted. I think you have integrity and people can trust you. I think you can put out both sides. We haven't had a lot on the uh, other side. If When I say the other side, less conservative. Right. But I, I think there could be something like the blue and red of Lake Forest. Like you have one one side of the people. Pe- what you have to, you have a sheet. Here's the uh, red version. Here's the blue version. Right. <laughs> well, I think and the then, problem with, with, you know, the media today and all that, I mean, it, like our podcast, I mean, I don't know how many times you've asked the opposing parties. Well, one opposing party came on, 
but the other just flat out refuses and doesn't want to give that time of day. But I guess that's, that's how it is now is you, you don't want to go on at, or talk about, I'm only going to talk about it to this group of people when yeah. you're missing the boat on the other group of people that vote too. I mean, cause you well, can yeah. have people switching sides, you know, yeah. if they start hearing, I, Oh God, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's what yeah, it's all about, isn't it? <laughs> well, you have to have the, uh, the guts to know that, you know, the, the, the reason why you're acting a certain way is based off of information that you have. It's, it's not feelings aren't bricks. Words aren't bricks. Right. Okay. And, uh, the, 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 it's like the view I've never watched the view, but it's like me going on the view. Maybe that's how they look at it. I don't know. I'd love to, see I'd love to go at it with Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then final thoughts on Florida. Very nice. Uh, I don't know. How, I don't know how you can get more states to. Uh, it. You're leaving it's, a it's, <laughs> Wisconsin. I could do Wisconsin. The Dells. I could, oh, I love that, Wisconsin. That would be my retirement, except for I don't know what the snow is like up there with the, but a lot. <laughs> uh, but DeSantis, uh, you know, I I went to Florida. I I bought the guy's book, and I heard what you know what he did, and uh, it's a it's a conservative tone to it, but uh, everything was based off of object objective data, and. Maybe by the time the show comes out, Trump got uh, arrested or whatever. But anybody on the either side of the, <laughs> whether it's Trump or it's uh, AOC or whatever, people are tuning that stuff out. And it's that little middle that we, you know, we'd like to talk to, you know, on the issues. Because after April 4th, it's like Montgomery crickets, <laughs> right. Randy crickets, Uh <laughs> Unless those pumps don't work and we're going to flame the hell out of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what's the ne what's the next issue, Skew? Take a guess. I have I, a couple ideas. The next issue in Lake Forest? Yeah. I'm trying to think. What has, uh, what's on the horizon? Well, I think the central business district is going to be a big one because something has to be done and move forward on that. Um, well, here, that, okay, answer like what has to be done with central business district? You mean all the empty storefronts, or what's the oh, issue? Yeah. yeah, I think that's a that's a big issue. I mean, I, I think it's a big issue that we have some really prominent um, restaurants opening up, opened up. Um, hometown I just walked by this morning and that looks like it's ready to open up. Looks great in there. Um, could be my new, new place. Uh, but it, with, with all that, you know, there's nothing in the town really. I mean, they close up. There's a few great stores there, but there's a lot of empty spaces and there's a lot of older buildings there that are probably deteriorating from within and, you know, well, if you're a landlord, your plan is going to be key. Well, what are you going to plan if you're a landlord? Then you lower the rents till you can get somebody to rent it from you. And then if you don't lower the rent, I'm just looking from a from a capitalistic point of view. Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? Get a subsidy from the city to pay the landlord, the owner of the property, to? Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, it's it's you know, there. I don't think there's much property owned by the city right now within the central business district where it is i think that's what's you know being considered development but you know here's the one thing pete like the post office that's a huge building and you know i can't imagine the government going to be you know having that open a while, a while longer but um you know what happens with that you know so, so you're I think saying the, the master plan is key not necessarily you know what can we do but you know, thoughts and 
you know, what happens if they shut down the post office? What's going to happen with that building? So you mean the city buys the market square? Oh, God, no. I mean, I, I know it's outrageous, but square. like what? No, I'm talking like, you know, like the post office. That's yeah. not owned by Market Square. I mean, you know, what happens if the um, government decides we're not going to do the mail there? Which, right. I mean, they pretty much have. I mean, there's not, that's all out west now. And, you know, it's just tellers there, but that's a gigantic you know, building. I you mean, know what that, that building looks like a, a house in Naples going up. Right. Cement blocks. I mean, but and... but you, you think about it, that's a cool building. Boy, if that got redeveloped into restaurants or shopping or whatever it might be, that that's what I'm saying is, you know, what's the future look like for a lot of these the space in town? You know? Like what are the options? Well, okay, so the, the feds leave that. That's still federally is it city owned property or federally owned property? Uh, I don't know, but that's 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 kind of what that whole master uh, plan is, is what what okay. do you do with it? I mean, there's you know, I know that, um, you know, the Midwest Bank, or not Midwest Bank, but um, the bank at the corner of, uh, I think, another company bought it from Midwest, but they were going to develop that and, you know, bring that out more, the building out more and have more retail in there. And, you know, the bank's still part of it, but that that all fell through because they sold it to another entity. But, I mean, that's the type of stuff is how do you develop, you know, some of this land there? And Randy was uh, head of that, right? Central yeah, business. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I so think that's a that's good reason. Be, of... I mean, if you look at Pete, like if you go to Bank Lane, you know where Wisconsin is? Yeah, yeah. Where the old Caputo's is, which is yeah, now yeah, hometown, yeah, yeah. And you look straight, is that south? All the way down Bank Lane till it runs into Vine. Yeah. I mean, you could walk through that whole thing. That's That's opportunity, I think. Um, it's kind of more or less been always the backside of stuff development, but if you go right down that bank lane, there's, you know, older buildings and possible opportunities for, you know, landlords to develop. I don't know. I mean, it's just interesting, but I think that's going to be the big, the big, well, thing if there's any corporate develop. real estate people out there that want to come on and, you know, get some exposure and then. I have one guy I'm, I'm trying to get on, but uh, I might have to twist his arm. Come like he's he's an I consider him an expert yeah. in the commercial real estate world and good guy. And I'll see if we can get him on here. Well, to the to the city of Lake Forest, uh, speaking for myself, I admit my ignorance, and I welcome anybody smarter than me to come on and educate me on subjects. So, which would be everybody. So, well, what, do you, what do you, you said you have some ideas. What do you think is um, up and coming after April 4th? Uh, it's probably an issue that you, you wouldn't want to get into. It has to do with the schools. Uh, so. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think that's going to be an issue, you know. Not even the, infra not, not infrastructure, but uh a lot of people outside of the outliers are talking about mental health and, you know, how, how the schools are dealing with it. No, I have firsthand knowledge of it. Okay. So <laughs> I, mean, I, I know. So, and I, I am very, an I'm very interested in mental health, but. Uh, but more for the city, you said city issues. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I said it's, issues in the city after oh, April 4th, gotcha. what people are talking gotcha. about. That's one yeah. of the things. So, and of course, to all of our people that email and text on the side, uh, you know, we are here to talk about what you're talking about. Okay. All you got to do instead of emailing, complaining about it, is just say, send me a link. I want to come on. <laughs> it's pretty hard. You click. It's Wednesday at 930. <laughs> just just click here and say i want to Zoom. come on and this is what i want to talk about and perfect and you know what call our bluff call us stupid see if we leave it in the show you, i'll yeah, lead it off you, you can come on and just rip us apart i don't care that's that's what we're here for <laughs> words aren't bricks i like that one words aren't i've never heard that one you haven't oh that's no. yeah that's a big one 
Words aren't bricks. Feel, feelings aren't bricks. Hang on a second. Don't leave. <laughs> okay, right here. Jeopardy theme insert here. So to all the people that I saw in Naples, Florida, thank you for the hospitality, especially on St. Patrick's Day. I definitely think they should stock more Miller lights and oh geez, here we go. Here's the thumbnail. Uh, Our new co-host. Say hello to Tucker. Tucker. <laughs> He's a little tired right now. There oh, we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's <laughs> the one right there. Thank you, buddy. That's a, how old? He is, well, I think 12 weeks. January 2nd, he was born. January 2nd. Same same breeder? No. Different. This was different. where we got Aspen in Galena. Ah, got it. So he's a big, he's going to be a big boy. Oh, so, very uh, nice. Look at those paws. Oh, you got a little something on your knee? <laughs> <laughs> he's a little tired right now. I, I shook so, him out of his uh, slumber. Does Tucker want to uh, close out the show? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> get, a, get a big yawn out of him. What? Hey, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> Maybe you yawn. He'll do it. <laughs> hey, uh. Say hi, Tucker. <laughs> bye bye. Hi, Thank everyone. you for watching the Lake Forest Podcast. <laughs> Tucker, Scoo, two weeks to election. <laughs> And there's Cooper. He's not happy. He's not Come happy on. about things. <laughs> it's like, why are you holding him? <laughs> Scoot, another great job. All right, man. All right. Smell you later. Tucker. The Lake Forest Podcast is supported by viewers, listeners, and businesses just like you. Looking for the best pool supplies? Look no further than Doheny's Pool Supplies. With a history dating back to 1967, this family-owned business offers everything families need to keep their pools clean and sparkling from chemicals to equipment. Plus, customers enjoy free shipping on all orders. Visit Doheny's Pool Supplies today at doheny.com, D-O-H-E-N-Y.com to learn more. Forest Bluff Real Estate Team serves Illinois, Wisconsin, Lake Forest, and Lake Bluff. John Joseph Fitus, Laura Lee Van Fleet, and of course, Michelle Parnell. Get a free market analysis now at forestbluffrealestate.com. For the best cannabis in the world, look no further than Iliad Epic Grow. Owned by Lake Bluff's own Rich Ruzich, they are a cannabis cultivation center focusing on hard-to-find small batch products that will delight both the occasional user and Gangier. When visiting Michigan, ask for it by name, Epic Products, Exceptional Process. For more information, email info at iliadgrow.com. Havy Communications has been helping first responders arrive safely since 1983. It's owned by Lake Forest own Mike Havy. Check them out at havycommunications.com. Paul Hammond, candidate for Lake Forest Mayor, April 4th, 2023. He's a lifetime resident of Lake Forest, licensed professional engineer in Illinois, registered energy professional in Chicago, Purdue electrical engineering graduate, BSEE 1979, commodity trader for over 40 years. He's running on the issues of stopping the plastic grass in Lake Forest parks. Because every 10 years, the plastic field needs to be replaced because of deterioration and wear. Email paul.hammond. PE at gmail.com. We'd also like to say we are thankful for our Patreon supporters, Reverend Luke Back from the Church of the Holy Spirit, Matt A, Elizabeth C, Costa, Lance Otto, RDM, John C, and Mike Edelman. Shout out to the Lake Forest Breakfast Group, Broad Stop and Captain Mike's in Kenosha, the Greentown Tavern, and the Frolic Lounge in Waukegan.